Welcome back to the New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. And don't blame me, I voted for Giant Meteor. We've got that story. Plus, they just finished building the largest radio telescope ever. But first, our first segment honestly could have made its own episode. But in a lot of ways, I think Corbett and I made that episode about a decade ago. This just in... The Iraq war was a lie, and the ensuing terror state that's being middle-managed by the Bush, Obama, Clinton, Blair crime families will continue, and the masses will still support them. So to just give you your sort of war criminals roundup of the last several days, Attorney General Loretta Lynch held private talks with Bill Clinton aboard a plane in Phoenix while her so-called Justice Department was investigating Hillary. And the article from Vox, Bill and Loretta's meeting scandal is every Clinton scandal in miniature. Then a couple days later, on the 4th of July, the New York Times mentions in passing a renewed job offer for Loretta Lynch should Clinton become president. And we've got that link for you as well. And then the day after our so-called Independence Day, the FBI, yes, the very same one that was run by fine Americans like J. Edgar Hoover and routinely sets up patsies for phony terror bus, they decided no prosecution with Hillary. And in doing so, really nullified at least six criminal laws, destruction or removal of property to prevent seizure, tampering with a witness, victim, or an informant, destruction, alteration, or falsification of records in federal investigations and bankruptcy, concealment, removal, or mutilation generally, public money, property, or records, and gathering, transmitting, or losing defense information. This, I think, basically is a gigantic slap in the face of most Americans who, James, I don't know, if we get mad, yes, the cops are killing people in the streets constantly. Yes, the TSA is beating up disabled girls. But worldwide criminal operations continue, and the next guys will come in, and they'll give a pass to the previous guys. We've got the same thing going on in the UK, James, right now with the Chilcot report, but I'll throw it to you to talk about the, the Hill Dog. Uh, it's the least surprising thing mm-hmm. that I've heard all year, basically. <laughs> um, I, and I say that not even just as someone who I think, like most right-minded people, um, would be against this verdict, this uh, this uh, suggestion by the FBI not to indict. But uh, I, I mean, even the the Hillary supporters, even the Hillbots, clearly, no one is surprised by this. No one expected an indictment, except I mean, crazy people who were thinking there was going to be some sort of justice. It's no surprise to me whatsoever. I imagine it's no surprise to you or no surprise to any of the audience. It's just depressingly unsurprising. And it's just another sign that when any any amount of criminality that the public is willing to put up with is the amount of criminality they will live under. And that, I think, is is playing out quite well. So a few days before the release of this new Chilcot report, it was reported the ICC came out and said, well, we're not going to investigate Blair but we might prosecute some of the soldiers. And now, today, yes, the Chilcot report is out. It took many, many years and many, many millions of dollars to report that, yes, the 2003 Iraq war was unnecessary. And there you have it. Your war criminals don't investigate other war criminals around up. Hey, maybe Tony was celebrating the 11th anniversary of 7-7 as we are publishing this 276th episode of New World Next Week on the 11th anniversary of 7-7. James, any comments on the Chilcot Report? It's actually a lot fresher than this Hillary story is as we go to tape. Uh, again, unsurprising, and again, it's just one of those things where they, they, there's a lot of little quotes that you could pull out of there. Oh, look, they're, they're really, you know, castigating Blair's administration for everything it was doing, Blair, the Blair government, but it doesn't result in anything. It has absolutely no teeth. They're not going to prosecute, indict, do anything. So it, it's meaningless in the end. What's the point of this big report that goes into all these details that does absolutely nothing. It will change nothing. And the only lesson to be learned here for the future would be criminal misleaders is, hey, just go for it. You're not going to, there's not going to be any repercussions. James, I think the quote you were looking for is, what difference does it make? That's the one. That's the phrase that pays. And we saw it over the last several weeks. And we all see these little goofy things that we scroll by. And There are a lot of times things are so bad, we need a little laugh here and there to kind of ha ha ha. And we've talked about a lot of times how satire, whether it was The Onion or otherwise, 
can in some ways go from being a healthy kind of steam valve and putting the feet to the fire, keeping the empire honest, all those lofty goals of, of satire, into just sort of normalizing things. And we kind of go, ah, well, whatever. So we saw this story several weeks ago. I didn't think I'd actually be talking about it here on New World Next Week, but 13% of Americans preferred death by giant meteor over Clinton or Trump. A new poll indicates that 13% of American voters would prefer a giant meteor causing an apocalyptic firestorm over supporting either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton for president. This means that a flying space rock likely to reach the 15% threshold to participate in general election debates more so than Gary Johnson or Jill Stein. Public policy polling included the giant meteor in its latest survey, which shows 43% of respondents favoring Hillary Clinton, 38% selecting Donald Trump, and 13% throwing up their arms to welcome the giant meteor as the country's new head of state. The giant meteor seems to be absorbing support from the Bernie Sanders camp, securing a whopping 27% of nonpartisan voters. So this is one of those kind of nice, funny kind of respites from what seems like the nonstop emotional con game known as the presidential selections. But James, I've been thinking about this a bit, and I've been talking about it on the morning show as well, and I think it's, it's summed up with a story from the Washington Post last month. Disdain for Trump, Clinton so strong, even the dead are campaigning. As the Washington Post reported, quote, one of the quirkier byproducts of a campaign season defined by vitriol and polarization has been a dramatic increase in the number of people whose last words are being used to campaign. I can't think of a sadder waste of energy, James, than getting emotionally involved in what are obviously a bunch of puppets. We're all learning this out, and of course we all learn it out, I think, is our, at our own pace. It takes, you know, step by step. I was feeling the Ron Paul burns we've discussed here in the episodes in years and years past. But you sort of see the way the game works if you're paying attention. And the sad thing for me is that people in their death notices are saying, well, rather than see the world run by Donald Trump, you know, Mary Jones has slipped into the sweet beyond. What a better way for the powers that shouldn't be to just control your entire life force and everything you are is projected in this two minutes hate of wasting your time against imaginary kind of boogeymen, James. It's, it's really, really sad, I think. Yeah. yeah, well said and well observed. And the only thing I would add to that is that I'd like to think, I'm not really holding my breath, but I'd like to think that one of the underlying messages of the giant meteor campaign is that... It's an acknowledgement that the really important world-changing things are not decided at the ballot box. You don't cast a vote for the really important things. You cast a vote for some meaningless puppet. Imagine if you cast a vote for a giant media or something that you know of real importance in the real world. If people take that to heart, then maybe they can stop focusing on this emotional con game and start focusing on things that really matter. We'll actually include a link story, a link to a story as well that I kind of got a kick out of. It's from the Boston Globe that actually gets into the story behind the selection's best bumper sticker, and it gets into who actually started it, and it actually kind of sources back to comedian Chris Rock. But the guy who was originally selling them, and kind of the funny punchline of he didn't even get rich off his dumb get rich quick meme of the moment. Our third and final story on this week's New World Next Week, I think, feels like a classic New World Next Week. We set up some crazy, insurmountable seeming problems, and then the final solution we come up with is, well, we just got to get the hell off this rock, right? China completes world's biggest radio telescope in search of alien life. China's completed the construction of the world's largest radio telescope, the 500-meter Aperture Spherical Telescope is how they came up with the acronym FAST, F-A-S-T. Last Sunday morning, July 3rd, engineers placed the last of the telescope's 4,400 panels into position. Construction of the $180 million 500-meter telescope began in 2011 and is set to begin observing the universe this September. FAST is evidence of China's increasing investment in science. It's now second only to the U.S. in terms of research spending and the number of scientific papers published. FAST has seven receivers, 
five of which were made in China and two by Australian and U.S. companies. The project scientists said FAST will be able to help research on gravitational waves and further the search for alien life. James, these stories, again, we can't escape them. And as bad and horrible as things will be, our mission is to push forward in all those sort of hokey Star Trek kind of ways. You can't deny it. And it's what we will do. And there's no way to kind of stop it. It's interesting when it ties in with the memes of Disclosure and Blue Beam and Hillary's going to tell us all about the aliens, right? Well, maybe it can watch out for that giant meteor. But um, <laughs> yeah, I don't really have much to add to this. Um, I think you're right. It's, uh, I mean, hey, this might be a good thing, depending how the information is shared and with whom and all of that kind of stuff. But on that note, or on a related space note... Uh, since we're in this age of Juno and Jupiter and all of this kind of stuff, I'll just throw in a link in the show notes for people who haven't seen it. Vivian Kubrick on Twitter responding to the faked moon landings. So I'll just throw in her response uh, where she says, wait for it. He didn't fake the moon landings. And to say otherwise is to dishonor his legacy. So it will convince absolutely no one on either side of the, uh, the debate. But at any rate, it's an interesting read. So I'll throw that in the show notes. Shut up, conspiracy theorists, I think is that's what she said. That's the quote you're looking for. More or less, yeah. Uh, sometimes good news helps, and I started a spinoff series called Good News Next Week that I've been doing each and every week, and so far this summer I've been shooting the episodes actually outside on our little balcony garden, and the latest episode is a good one, not the least of which because Frankie the Cat decides to make appearances and run all over me while I'm reporting the news about giving grandma a bong hit because pot beats Alzheimer's as the latest research shows. There's also good news stories about California and their water and also the ozone hole healing. So those are your good news next week stories. However, some of the other stories we're watching using hashtag new world next week. James, this is a twofer for you that I think is one of those deaths to the cult of scientism. USGS worker falsified test results affecting research projects for years and this is your brain on bad data. FMRI bugs could upend years of research because, as the UK Register put it, someone finally got around to checking the data. Meanwhile, British Gas offers free weekend electricity if you install a smart meter. And you know that massive payoff to Israel we reported on a couple of weeks ago? Don't worry, you guys. Obama just offered to substantially sweeten that largest military aid package ever, making it the even larger military package ever. <laughs> U.S. police access civilian data for fun and profit. And back here in the USSA, Starbucks workers are learning the grim reality of a higher minimum wage. I mentioned the morning monarchy. James, I actually do that every weekday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And I do it live via my own stream and website. And we do it five days a week. And I think for me, it's the best way to kind of get out there. And I think in a lot of ways, what did actually someone say? I really let my personality through on the morning monarchy because I'm so reserved here on New World Next Week. I know, because I crack the whip so hard. Stay in line. Uh, yeah, I would say the theme for today is business as usual until the meteor arrives. So uh, unless the meteor arrives in the next week, I suppose we'll be doing this again next week. All right, buddy. Thanks. Take care.